It's no animated version of Cosmos, but this cartoon knows what it's talking about. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things Rick and Morty gets right about science. Here you did it! You, 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 you figured out that crazy solution like you always do! Hey everyone! Just want to take a moment here to give a shout out to today's sponsor, the mobile RPG Raid Shadow Legend. Raid is the new free-to-play collection RPG that is taking over mobile gaming. Almost 10 million players worldwide have already downloaded the game in just three months. Collect and customize over 400 champions with 1 million plus champion builds and assemble a team from 16 heroic factions. Discover 13 spectacular locations, raid with friends in a clan, or claim glory in the PvP arena. The choice is yours. For me, it's all about the fully voiced story campaign, with AAA quality production value and graphics. These champions are as great to play as they are to look at. But don't just take my word for it. With almost 200,000 reviews, Raid has an almost perfect score on the Play Store. The game is growing super fast and they are really upfront with development. Check out this roadmap that has all the plans for game updates over the next six months. There will be a totally new faction that'll be added to the game soon, a tag team arena feature, and a new clan boss. Go to the video description and click on the special link for an instant 50,000 silver and a free epic champion within a week as part of the new player program to start your journey. Good luck, I'll see you there. For this list, we're taking a look at scientific principles depicted in Rick and Morty that surprisingly aren't without merit. We're including science that isn't possible yet, but could theoretically exist in the future, as well as scientific theories. Uh, terrific. The fart that pooped gold. No wonder every cop in the system is looking for us. Number 10, spaceships that run on concentrated dark matter. Concentrated, huh? It's believed that dark matter encompasses 85% of the universe's mass. To power his space cruiser, Rick created concentrated dark matter, which allows him to travel at a record speed. I don't think we can perform our new song, The Recipe for Concentrated Dark Matter, for a crowd this tiny. You got that right, Rick! <laughs> now that's more, more like it! We can see why the Zygerians wanted Rick's fuel recipe, especially since dark matter might actually be the key to faster space travel. Jia Liu, a real-world physicist from New York University, has suggested constructing a spaceship with a front intake that can consume dark matter particles or neutralinos. Two parts platonic quarks, one part cesium. Okay, uh -huh. These neutralinos would destroy each other while passing through the system, effectively serving as a jet engine. A faster speed equals more encounters with neutralinos, meaning the spacecraft could almost achieve light speed within days. It's only a theory, but we may be following Rick's lead. You should try having a little respect for the dummies of the universe, now that you're one of us. Uh, maybe you're right, Jerry. Number 9. The Complexities of DNA To win over Jessica, Morty makes the colossal mistake of turning to Rick, who whips up a love serum comprised of vol DNA. Rick creates an antidote with praying mantis DNA, but this just turns people into mantis creatures. This just in, Morty Smith's whereabouts are still unknown. What the hell? The only thing that is known is how cute he is. I love him so much, I want to make love to him and then eat his head. Rick tries correcting his mistake with a serum that combines the DNA of various species, but instead Cronenberg's the entire world. I'm not the one who fouled up the serum! I'm not the one who, 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 who haphazardly, you know, mixed a bunch of nonsense together and created a bunch of Cronenbergs! While turning people into grotesque blobs isn't exactly feasible science, Rick wasn't wrong when he said that DNA is complicated. For many years, scientists only focused on less than 2% of the genome, writing off the other 98% as junk DNA. In 2012, however, scientists found that 80% of this so-called junk DNA was biochemically active, meaning that even Rick has a lot left to learn. Number 8. Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle Time is every bit as complicated as DNA, which Morty and Summer learned the hard way when their timeline is split into two separate realities. Our time is fractured! You two somehow created a feedback loop of uncertainty that split our reality into two equally possible impossibilities! As bonkers as this episode is, the plot possesses echoes of Werner Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which indicates that you can never simultaneously know the precise speed and position of an object, because if you try to measure the speed, the position changes. Likewise, the speed changes while measuring the position. The episode is also largely based on Schrodinger's cat paradox, in which a feline is in a concealed box. He imagined taking a cat and placing it in a sealed box, with a device that had a 50% chance of killing the cat in the next hour. At the end of that hour, he asked, 
What is the state of the cat? This thought experiment implies that the cat is both dead and alive until the box is open. The episode even references this when Rick reveals the house is in cat-infested space. I assume they're Schrodinger's cats. Or actually, I assume they both are and aren't, just like us. Is, is the, the world, world gone? gone? Number seven, love is a chemical reaction. Oh my God, Morty, you look really nice tonight. Going back to the love serum, Rick tells Morty that he's wasting his time obsessing over Jessica because love is nothing more than a chemical reaction. In 2009, Larry Young from Emory University found that there may be a link between biochemical actions and the emotion of love. This discovery could be used to develop drugs to help people with autism and other social disorders, although it wouldn't be a love potion per se. Jessica, get a hold of yourself! You don't deserve to carry Morty's genes! I love Morty. And I hope Morty loves me. That being said, the key ingredient in Rick's love serum is oxytocin, a hormone that affects sexual reproduction, childbirth, and social bonding. Quote, oxytocin is not the love hormone, according to Young. But he added that, quote, it's tuning us into social information and allowing us to analyze it at a higher resolution. When she's nursing, when she's looking at her baby, this oxytocin molecule is causing her, to, her brain to believe that this baby is the most important thing in her world. Number six, the many worlds interpretation. After the love serum goes awry and everyone's DNA is twisted out of order, our titular duo relocates to another reality that wasn't destroyed and where they're both already dead. There's an infinite number of realities, Morty, and in a few dozen of those, I got lucky and turned everything back to normal. As Rick explains, there are infinite realities occupied by different versions of themselves. There's even a citadel where an entire society of Ricks and Mortys coexist. While we're still waiting for someone to invent a portal gun, the show's perception of alternate realities does take a page from the many worlds interpretation. According to this interpretation of quantum mechanics, our universe is basically one branch on a tree with countless other branches that represent alternate realities. Virtually any action, such as putting a cat in a box, can create multiple realities with different results. Number five, the probability of anatomy park. With a homeless Santa on his deathbed, well, death ping pong table, Rick shrinks Morty down and injects him inside. Oh my God, this is insane. Spleen Mountain, Bladder Falls. Morty finds that the man's organs have been converted into a theme park and the diseases on display are running wild. The episode borrows a fair deal from Fantastic Voyage and Jurassic Park, which are both admittedly more science fiction than science fact. Even if shrink rays are likely destined to forever remain on the drawing board, this concept isn't deprived of some scientific backing. In 2015, microscopic machines successfully ventured inside a living mouse to deliver nanoparticles. The next logical step may be to send these machines into humans to release drugs. It'd certainly be much safer than sending Morty in there. <gasps> the nipple hole, it's beautiful. Number four, freezing people. Of all the devices Rick keeps in his lab coat, the freeze ray may be the most practical. Oh jeez, Rick, what'd you do to Frank? Pretty obvious, Morty, I froze him. Now listen, I need your help, Morty. We're not holding our breath for a Mr. Freeze type gun that turns people into ice sculptures, but it is possible to cryogenically freeze someone after they've been declared legally dead. By putting the recently deceased person in liquid nitrogen temperature, their body is preserved so it can theoretically be reanimated later. What remains to be seen is how we would bring frozen people back from the dead. The Cryonics Institute hopes to one day be able to freeze people with terminal diseases, although this currently is not legal. As for freezing a healthy living person, let's just say we wouldn't want to end up like Frank. Hi, Frank. <laughs> Number three, simulations within simulations. Well, what's this? Well, what could this possibly be? because it looks like you're inside a simulation, inside a simulation. On more than one occasion, Rick and Morty has touched upon virtual reality, which is only becoming more sophisticated as technology advances. In Morty Night Run, Morty plays a game called Roy where he lives out another person's run of the mill life. Have you talked to my father about the carpet store? Roy? <sighs> In M. Night Shyamalians, Rick and Jerry find themselves trapped in a simulation, which turns out to be several layers of simulations. While we've yet to see any concrete proof that the Matrix has essentially become a reality, it's not out of the question to consider that our world may be a video game. Oh, and, and by the way, I don't have discolored butthole flaps. That was part of the simulation. Oh, uh, sir, should I cancel that appointment then? Yeah, of course you should. <laughs> 
No, keep it. Uh, move it up, actually. Elon Musk even stated that there's a, quote, one in billions chance that our world isn't just a simulation. Numerous other scientists have also given this theory serious thought, meaning Rick is not alone. I give you your new slogan. <sighs> well, say something. Do you like it? Yes. You do? Yes. yes. Number two, Nazis tried to create talking dogs. Jake, roll over. Go to the bathroom. Holy no crap. way. In the second episode of the series, Rick gives Morty's dog a helmet that makes him highly intelligent. Obviously, we don't have devices that can enable dogs to talk or turn them into war machines. Believe it or not, though, the Nazis actually did attempt to create an army of talking dogs so they could not only communicate with humans, but also assist in military operations. As ludicrous as this all sounds, we can't help but wonder what would have happened if the Nazis succeeded in such an experiment. Wow. Uh, okay, is, is, is everything okay in here? Jerry, come to rub my face in urine again. No! Much like the reality where Hitler cured cancer, it's probably best not to think about it. You were always kind to me, Morty. That's why I will leave you with your testicles. From now on, you will be my best friend and live by my side. Th thanks Snuffles! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pregnant Robots after Morty comes into possession of a Gazorpian sex robot, he does exactly what you would expect with her. So we're just going to pretend this isn't happening? What is not expected, however, is the half-human, half-alien baby that comes out of Gwendolyn. Believe it or not, it's not impossible for a robot to give birth. In 2016, a patient simulator known as Victoria delivered an artificial child via C-section. As you can hear, Victoria's baby cries and feels and moves like a real infant. Granted, this is a far cry from a person mating with and impregnating a machine. Considering how bizarre the episode is, though, we're just amazed that there's any scientific accuracy behind this idea. If Victoria could become a reality, who says that Gwendolyn won't be next? Killing is bad! Bad! <laughs> You're silly, Daddy. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.